In this video, we're going to learn about the difference between function and and function in C. So if you recently had a great question on one of my videos covering pthreads in C, when using pthreads, we pass to a function a pointer to the function that we want the thread to run. And in some of the videos, I just pass in the function name. And in other videos, I pass in the function name with the and operator in front of it. And this might lead someone to believe that there's a difference. If we look at examples of using pthreads online, We'll also find that some examples just use the function name and some examples will use the function name with the and operator in front of it. So let's explore whether there is a difference between the two, but I'll tell you right now that the short answer is no, there isn't really a difference. So to explore this, let's first create a basic function. So we'll call the function function and it will have a void return type and the function will accept new arguments and the function will just print out function exclamation mark followed by a new line. Then we'll make a pointer variable that's going to be a pointer to this function. So we'll have void and we'll have star function underscore pointer one. And then we'll have open bracket, close bracket after this because the function accepts no arguments. And then we'll assign it the value function. And this here is the equivalent of this here. Putting the and operator in front is not gonna make any difference. In both cases, we're getting a pointer to this same function. It's going to result in the same memory address. We can test this out. So right now, just to make sure this is working, we can dereference the function pointer with star function underscore pointer one. And we can call the function like this. We could also call the function like this, function underscore pointer one, open bracket, close bracket. And this will also call the function in the same way. We can save this, compile our program, and then run it, and we'll get function and function. Now let's make another function pointer variable, and this time we'll assign it the value of and function. So we'll copy this, and we'll paste it, and we'll call this one function underscore pointer two, and we'll assign it the value and function. And then we'll try using it in the same way down here. We'll just change these to function underscore pointer two. We can save this, compile our program, and run it, and it works the exact same way we can actually check to make sure that these are the same values. Let's actually print out the actual memory address stored in both function underscore pointer one and function underscore pointer two. So we'll have printf percent p to output the pointer backslash n, and then we're going to output the value stored in function underscore pointer one. Then we'll do the same thing with function underscore pointer two. We'll have percent p backslash n and then function underscore pointer two. So we can save this, compile our program, and run it, and we get the exact same memory address. So this is actually a thing. The compiler is going to treat both function and and function as pointers to that function. So we could pass either of them as a value to a function that expects a pointer to a function as an argument. Now you might think that this second version here might require more work because there's this operator here, but as a practical matter, it won't. The compiler is just going to treat both of these the same and the actual computer program we get as a result, the compiled program is going to be identical. We can actually test that. So let's delete this here and we'll compile this version of the program here with just function and no and operator in front of it. We're going to compile it to assembly code by using this dash uppercase S option and I'll have dash O and I'll say D1 and I'll compile D.C. So we're going to output the assembly code version of this program to a file called D1. So we'll run this. And if I open up D1, we'll find that there's this assembly code version of the program there. Now we'll do the same thing. This time though, we'll have the and operator in front of function like this. We'll save it and we'll compile the program. This time though, I'm gonna call the output file D2. Now, if we open up D2, we're gonna find it looks identical to D1. If we go between the two, they look basically the same. If we actually do a diff between them, where diff is a command line program that can identify differences between files, D1 and D2 actually have no differences according to diff. So they're identical. What this means is that the compiler is going to treat function and and function the exact same way. 
So it's not like your computer is going to have to do some extra computational work because you use the AND operator instead of just the function name. The AND operator might make it extra clear that it's a pointer, but it doesn't really matter either way. There's really no difference at all. So it's really up to you what you use. And I don't even really have a best practice recommendation to be honest with you, because you'll find that in online examples from reputable sources like IBM and official documentation of libraries that both formats are used. So it's just a thing that's out there. It's just a quirk of C. It actually is part of the C standard that it's like this. It's not a compiler specific thing. It's part of the actual C standard. So I'll post a link to this Stack Overflow thread where somebody actually identified the part in the specification where this is identified. So it's just a quirk of C that we can use either function or and function to get the pointer to a function. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers including courses to help you develop C programming projects.